today is one of those really difficult conversations because we're talking about the characteristics of the unenlightened. What is that? We're about to unpack that for you. As we begin today, I want to ask you to do one thing. Please don't judge. Please listen with an open mind. And then let these thoughts roll through your head over the next few days and few weeks as you unpack them and what that means for you in your personal life. Because you might discover after today's conversation that you might start looking at things in a slightly different way. With that, please help me welcome O Moon. Good morning. A beautiful overcast day that looks like rain in eastern Oregon. How do you know if you're unenlightened? I mean, how do you know if you're guilty of not being aware? An unenlightened person would probably shrug their shoulders and say, the ocean is filled with millions of tons of plastic and garbage. There's nothing I can do about that. All of our Congress is going in the wrong direction. There's nothing I can do about that. And so it depends on how you look at things. One person can make a difference. One enlightened person could make a difference. If you look at Mahatma Gandhi in India, India was moving in a direction, and one little man with a profound dedication and knowledge and a belief system that was powerful changed a whole nation. We have a lot more ability to affect things than we realize. We're actually powerful, dynamic, multidimensional beings. What we're called to do is to be understanding and empathetic and to share the light and knowledge that people are willing to receive. It's better if people come to you and say, what do you think about this? And then you share your ideas with them. If you go to other people and say, let me tell you what you should be thinking, you're going to have a lot of resistance. People uh, don't take to that very kindly. You know, it's interesting you bring that up because I live in an area where there are a lot of missionaries that will come from various churches and I'll be out working in the yard and they will come up and they will interrupt me. And (laughs) they have an inspiration to want to share something right then because that's part of their time frame. Whereas if it were part of my time frame, I would be more receptive. What I became aware of is not that I was opposed to the messaging as I was opposed to the timing of the messaging. I know that for me, there's a certain time that I am more receptive. And there is usually either where in my life something's not working. So I have to stop and take an inner look at myself and say, I I need a different result because I'm asking the wrong questions of myself. Or there's something that I saw in someone else. I saw someone living a better way. And I'm like, hey, I don't know what they're doing, but I want to do whatever they're doing because they look healthy and happy. And that doesn't reflect what I'm feeling right now myself. It goes back to the concept that you don't know what you don't know. And sometimes you're totally unaware. Uh, I remember years ago, I was in a conversation with someone and they mentioned sacred geometry to me. And that was a term that I'd never heard before. So I began to do research on sacred geometry. And there were only three websites on sacred geometry at the time. Very little information. Now, if you go onto the web, you cannot read all of the information about sacred geometry. There is such a profusion of sacred geometry. So sometimes we're just introduced to an idea that we've never thought of before. If there's something in us that wants to to understand things and to grow and be the best version of ourselves, when we hear something, something will trigger a curiosity. When we're introduced to a new idea, if we at least explore and stretch our minds a little bit and move to the edge of our comfort zone, then there are a lot of possibilities that we can experience that otherwise we wouldn't. Uh, For example, if you've never heard of Jesus, And missionaries come to your door and say, hey, have you heard about Jesus? That should maybe trigger something in you to question and to say, hey, why don't you come in and tell me about Jesus? I've never heard about him. Or if you know all about Jesus, you'd say, hey, talk to someone else where your time will be more valuable. It depends on where you are and what your understanding is. You should be looking for new ideas. You should be looking for 
concepts that would be interesting. There's no possible way that you can surf through the internet at all without running onto interesting ideas. I have a bad habit of going to YouTube and looking for self-help videos because I'm kind of a do-it-yourselfer. Now I have over 5,000 subjects backlogged in my watch later list <laughs> because there's so many things that I find interesting and that I want to do that I never have time for. So people are just really different. Some people are on a quest to improve themselves and to learn new things. And other people just want to be entertained and get through the day so that they can be entertained tomorrow and get through that day. In honor of your time, I will let you go, but I really enjoyed today's conversation. I just really, this is the highlight of my week. I love looking forward to these conversations when we can dig below the surface and we can ask different questions of each other and of ourselves, because it is in these moments that we say, wait a second, the world is different than I actually thought it was. And that gives us a chance to go out there and be somebody new and a better version of ourselves. Thank you for having me today.